a boy undergoes daily beatings from his abusive stepdad, turning him into a bully and resulting in his expulsion for violent behavior. Sent to a boarding school full of bullies, we explore his experiences there. The film begins with a family of three, Eric and his parents, having dinner. Deep in thought, Eric receives a slap from his stepdad. Living in Stockholm, 15-year-old Eric resides with his mother and cruel stepfather. At home, the stepfather subjects him to daily beatings after dinner. Despite his mother's passive stance, the violence persists. At school, molded by his harsh upbringing, Eric becomes a frequent initiator of fights. Post-dinner, he endures a belt beating while his mother plays the piano, masking the sounds. In the next scene, Eric violently attacks a man in the street, leading to a summons to the principal's office. Facing the principal, Eric's behavior leaves him shocked, yet academically, Eric excels. Despite his aggressive conduct at school, some teachers still defend him. That day, the principal calls him evil, and even goes on to say that Eric needs a good beating. Eric's father passed away long ago, and his mother has remarried a seemingly psychopathic man. We see that they are selling Eric's father's house, and the lawyer is his father's friend. The lawyer takes Eric to a corner and asks him about some theft and violence cases he was involved in. However, the cases were never legally proven, so he got away with it. Eric's mother tells him enough is enough. She tells Eric that they are going to send him to a boarding school. She begs him to finish high school without getting in trouble. Upon arriving in Stiernsberg, he realizes that the boarding school is his final chance at reaching sixth form. Eric attempts to forego his violent tendencies. His new school is far from where he lives, and it is a collection of many impressive buildings. When Eric gets there, he is right away approached by Otto Silverheim. He gives Eric a quick tour of the campus and then takes him to his room. Eric says hello to his roommate named Pierre Tanguay. He seems like a nerdy student who tends to stay in the room and does not seem to be involved in any sports activities. He reveals that he prefers to stay in the room and read books. He is the son of a rich businessman. The boys bond over a film and then go to have dinner. At dinner, Eric has to go through a few things he is of course not used to, like offering a prayer before eating. At dinner, we are introduced to another character named Johan. He is in Eric's class. We see that the seating arrangement is sorted out by different social standings. The boy next to Eric uses bad language and is immediately disciplined. A student makes him stand in front of everyone in the hall and hits him in the head for using bad language. The teachers do not intervene at all, and it turns out that the entire system of the school is actually run by the students themselves. After dinner, Pierre finds some cigarettes which he hid earlier, and he shares them with Eric. The boy then explains the rules of punishments to Eric in the school, and Eric tells him that he really wants to try and do well, as his mother begged him to finish school. The next day, when Eric is talking to Johan, he accidentally uses bad language. One of the senior students tries to make Eric pay for using bad language, and he tries to discipline him, but Eric refuses. He is given an option, get punished right now, or get detention for the weekend. Eric goes to detention, and Johan gets punishment right away. After that, we see that Eric is in his swimsuit as he goes to the school pool, but the boys there tell him that he cannot swim in the pool unless he is part of the school team. He says that he can break any record, and instantly impresses the other swimmers with his swimming abilities, and they welcome him to the team. When he is with Pierre, the boy tells Eric that he should be prudent out there, and there is no need to get in the spotlight in this place. He advises Eric to keep a low profile, and asks him to stay unnoticed. Then their door gets knocked and Eric is summoned to the senior boarding house. He goes to see the seniors, and all of them ask Eric to polish their shoes as a punishment, but Eric refuses to do so. They are not used to being refused, so they are a little confused as to what to do with Eric. Then Otto says that he is still new, so is not yet used to how things work here. Eric is now in a pickle. He does not want to fight them, but at the same time, he does not want to bend and take orders from them either. Eric starts to get along well with his roommate, and before they go to bed that night, they talk, and end the conversation on a positive note, saying they are true friends now. The next day, when they are walking in the hallway, he bumps into a senior boy named Dolan. His senior demands him to apologize right away, but Eric is not the type to apologize for bumping into someone. And that too, inadvertently so, he refuses to apologize. Dolan then challenges Eric to the ring later that night. The ring is a tiny, violent discipline in which two senior students beat down a single misbehaving student, and if the other student does not appear for the ring, he will be called a rat. Eric is not a coward, but at the same time, he does not want to get bullied and beaten up like this too. He is now confused as to whether he should go or not. He calls his mother, and after he talks to her, he decides not to go out there and he is now called a rat by everyone at school. 
After a while, a group of senior students come to the room and start searching. They throw their stuff everywhere and make a mess in the room. The next day, when Eric comes out of the pool after a swim, his coach Mr. Berg tells him that he is a very gifted swimmer, and he has what it takes to win the swimming tournament there. Eric is then summoned to the student council, and they list the bad things Eric has done at his new school so far. Since Eric has not been obeying the seniors, he is labeled disrespectful, and they add that Eric keeps getting more and more detentions. Eric's first detention is to dig a hole while it is raining and then fill it back up. Eric now starts to get pissed off at Dolan, but he chooses not to do anything about it. That night, he goes to have dinner by himself, and there he meets a girl named Mara, who is on the working staff. The girl is nice to Eric, and the two have a nice little chat. When Eric came to the school, Pierre warned him not to talk to the staff, and that if he does, he's going to get expelled. Then comes the time when all the other students go home. But Eric is facing punishment at the hands of the student council, so he is not allowed to go home that weekend. He goes to have dinner that night, he is alone, and meets Marha again. The girl invites him for a walk later that night. Eric agrees and goes to see Marha later that night, and the two start making out. They seem to have good chemistry between them. Eric is then threatened that the student council is going to attack him, and they plan on embarrassing him. Eric decides that he is going to defend himself against the student council. Later that night, he is ready in his room when his door starts to knock. He does not open the door, but they manage to open it and throw a bucket of toilet water in his room. It starts to smell like crap in his room, and the water starts to go everywhere. Eric decides that he's going to teach these students a lesson now. He fills up a bucket with the toilet water and makes his way to the dormitory to the student council. He manages to sneak into Otto and Dolan's room with a bucket of toilet water in his hand. When he goes into the room, they are fast asleep, so he pours the filthy water on Otto's head and gets out of there. Now they have no way to prove that Eric is the one who poured filth on them. Eric on the other hand mocks and taunts Otto when he sees him the next day. Otto has lost it. At mealtime, Otto starts to beat up Eric's face very badly when everyone is out there in the dining hall. As everyone looks on, Marha, the girl from the staff, can't help it. She tries to stay quiet, but ends up shouting loudly when she sees Eric being beaten up like that. When the teachers see that it is getting out of hand, one of the teachers comes forward and asks the boys to put a stop to the violence. At night, Eric and Mara manage to sneak out again. They kiss and Eric invites her to come to the swimming tournament, where he is going to be participating as well. The swimming match approaches and Eric is determined to win, but he soon realizes that in order to win, he must defeat the current school champion and son of the most prominent donor to the school. He knows that winning would make him more of a target than ever, but his fair and dedicated swim coach assures him that it is a matter of honor, and he must not lose. Eric wins, breaking a number of school records, and humiliating a number of sixth formers who sarcastically clap when his accomplishments are vocalized by the swim coach. Eric comes home with a swimming championship and a good report card. His mother welcomes him, and so does his father, but with a cane as he goes on to beat up Eric yet again. Eric goes back to the school. He brings a Christmas gift for Pierre, and Pierre gives him a law book as a gift, as he once told him that he wanted to be a lawyer. The student council now starts to target Pierre. They try to provoke him in the hall, and then they summon him to the student council. Pierre comes back to his room and tells Eric that he faces three weeks of detention for absolutely nothing. The senior students then come to the room and start creating a mess again. They harass Pierre, and one of them pees directly on his bed try to get Eric, but this time using another method in which they do so by harassing someone greatly cares for. He goes to his coach and tells him that he does not want to see him anymore. He then goes to Mara and tells him that she does not want to see him anymore because she could lose her job or Eric could get expelled. Eric leaves the swimming team as he believes this will save his friend from the relentless bullying. But that doesn't seem to be enough. A while later, Eric is called up to the council president Silverholm's room. There, Pierre has been made to strip, and Dallin threatens to put a cigarette out on his chest. But Eric volunteers instead, and unflinchingly endures the pain. Seeing that Eric did not even flinch, Otto gets even more frustrated, and tells Pierre to attend the ring tomorrow, and goes on to shout at Eric, saying that all of this could have been avoided had he not gone against the rules. The next day, Pierre says that he wants to go to the ring because he is not a coward. He wants to stand up to the bullies despite Eric telling him not to go. Pierre goes out there and tries his best, but he gets badly beaten up by two seniors as Eric watches on. His blood boils at the sight of his friend getting beaten up like that, but he is unable to do anything. Eric is ambushed when walking back from detention. 
They tie him to the ground and pour boiling water over him, followed by cold water, and leave him outside to freeze. Lara sees him tied there, she unties him, takes him to her room and tends to him. As they lie in bed together, they kiss, having a nice romantic moment. When Eric gets back to his room, he gets to know that Pierre has left the school forever. Eric is now bitter and angry, goes to Otto and Dylan and challenges them to a fight in an hour. In the fight, he takes the two of them down very easily, but he does not let go of them. He beats them up brutally. He goes in search of Mara, who is left for Finland after being fired for unknown reasons. Eric then finds a letter in his room. It's from Mara, telling him that she is pregnant. Otto comes to Eric's room to search the room. He reads the letter and goes directly to the headmaster. The headmaster is given an intercepted. Eric's expulsion for having sexual relations with a staff member. Eric searches for and finds Otto for revenge in the woods and threatens to kill him. Otto gets so afraid that he starts vomiting. As Silverheim begs for his life on his knees after being scared into hysteric crying and vomiting, Eric catches himself about to exploit his violent tendencies, but stops himself and assures Silverheim he won't kill him because he is not like him. Eric, fueled by a sense of justice, makes a triumphant return to school, shedding light on the school's violation of Sweden's secrecy laws in intercepting Mara's letter. With a bold move, he threatens to expose the institution's casual approach to the law, leading to his reinstatement. As he hands back Mara's letter, Eric is granted the opportunity to complete his last semester in a relatively tranquil environment. The academic year eventually comes to a close, and Eric's return home takes a distressing turn as he discovers his mother bearing the scars of his stepfather's violence. Taking a firm stand, Eric warns his stepfather that the cycle of abuse ends now. Closing the door behind him, Eric steals himself for a confrontation, seeking a form of retribution for the years of suffering, delivering a form of justice that unfolds off-screen. The aftermath remains shrouded in uncertainty whether the stepfather underwent a transformative change or chose to exit the family dynamic. In a poignant moment of reconciliation, Eric reconnects with Pierre, who is on the brink of embarking on an educational journey to Geneva. Inspired by a renewed sense of purpose, Eric sets out to establish contact with Marha, harboring aspirations of realizing his dream of becoming a lawyer. In essence, Eric's story is a testament to resilience, justice, and the pursuit of one's dreams, reflecting the complexity of human relationships and the enduring spirit to overcome adversity. Thanks for accompanying us on this compelling journey.